as the art of dynamic relaxation is more and more completely acquired, as habits of improper use are replaced by better habits, and as visual functioning improves, the flashes of better vision become more frequent and of longer duration, until at last they coalesce into a continuous state of normal seeing. Hi, this is Nathan Oxenfeld with Integral Eyesight Improvement. Today I want to spend a little bit of time addressing the topic of clear flashes, or flashes of clarity, which are these momentary experiences of seeing clearly without using glasses or contacts. Once you start practicing things like the Bates Method or other forms of natural vision improvement, and you start going without your glasses or your contacts more, spending more time without them. Lots of my other instructional videos and materials demonstrate specific practices that are designed to encourage these experiences to happen for you, to give you flashes of clarity. But today I wanted to spend a little time just kind of explaining it and giving some examples of what these flashes of clarity are, what it means, and how to encourage more of them to come and to make them last longer. Because at first, they're called flashes of clarity because at the start they're quite temporary. They appear and then they disappear. Your vision becomes clear and then it gets blurry again. But that's okay because those first little flashes of clarity are actually a really good sign. It's really good feedback that the method is working for you and that you're doing something correctly. Specifically, you are learning and applying something called dynamic relaxation, which I'm going to explain in this video. But thinking back on my own experience, this is how my vision improvement journey began. Once I started taking lessons with my vision teacher online, Dr. Jerry Ann Tabor, I started spending more time without my glasses for myopia and astigmatism, and I started to make these practices a part of my everyday routine. Within a couple of weeks, I started experiencing these flashes of clarity for myself. I started noticing more clarity on things in the distance, on trees and leaves and street signs when I was walking my dog without my glasses or getting a glimpse of clarity on someone's face across the street. So if you're nearsighted, you're looking for these flashes off in the distance where it would normally be very blurry. If you're farsighted, they might appear up close when you're reading a book or looking at your cell phone. But you're not going to notice these flashes of clarity when you're wearing your glasses. So typically the more you spend time without them, the more chances or opportunities you have to notice them happening. And it's important to understand that these flashes of clarity are found right in the middle of your visual field. Sometimes people experience flashes of clarity without even noticing it because they're expecting their entire visual field, central and peripheral, to become perfectly clear all at once. But if you've watched my centralization video or the fundamental principle video, you know that only your central vision is equipped to see fine details because that's where all of your cones are on your retina. Your peripheral vision, the rest of your retina, is covered in rods. So the whole outside, everything surrounding your central vision is not as equipped to see fine, sharp details. You can still see stuff and you can still be aware of your peripheral vision, but it's not supposed to be as sharp or clear or distinct as what you're looking directly at or centralizing on. So as you're looking for these clear flashes, I want you to be looking in small little areas. Maybe you don't see an entire tree become clear at once. Maybe you see just one or two leaves pop into clarity. Or if you're farsighted and you're looking at a book, maybe the whole page won't become clear, but you'll see one letter or one word pop out into clarity for you. And that counts as a clear flash. And it turns out that the more clear flashes you get in the small little area in the middle, the clarity does start to spread out and your peripheral vision can become a little bit clearer over time as well. But I just want to point that out because you may have already been experiencing these improvements, but maybe you haven't been as aware of them because they haven't been quite as big or as apparent as maybe you were thinking or expecting or what you've been used to when you look through glasses or contacts which kind of trick your brain into thinking that you can see a really large area all equally clearly at once, which goes a little bit against how the natural vision works of centralizing on a small area 
and allowing the peripheral vision to be a little bit less distinct than what you're looking directly at. But before I explain the clear flashes a little bit more and talk about how to encourage them or make them last longer, I first want to share a couple of case histories that people have shared with me of them experiencing clear flashes through this practice. So first, I've got an example from a student who took my online course called the Holistic Vision Program, which is my individual online course that you go through at your own pace. And she wrote, I had many flashes of clear vision on my walk yesterday. So magical. I definitely noticed that vision is better when I'm outdoors. I also noticed that things look so much more three-dimensional than they did with my glasses or contacts. I'm working on allowing and believing in this miracle of clear vision rather than being afraid of it or denying it. Really an amazing process. So that was from Mara, who took my holistic vision program. And then I just got an email yesterday from a student who's in my current 12-week online group vision improvement course named Nancy, and she wrote, I have to tell you about two exciting instances of clarity. I was standing in front of a restaurant looking at the menu through the window and could actually read it without glasses for a moment. That same day, I was on a section of a hiking trail that was a bit steep with little rocks that were dangerously slippery. I caught myself trying to focus on everything across the trail out of fear. But then I paused, reminding myself to think of the tiny, clear, central spot. Without fixating on it, though, I could feel my eyes relax, and the path became clearer. So that's a perfect example of what I was just talking about with the centralization. When she was trying to see the whole trail all at once, central and peripheral, it was blurry because she was afraid of slipping on the, on the rocks. But then she remembered to centralize by looking at just one part of the trail, and then her eyes relaxed, and then the whole trail became clear when she started centralizing. This next example comes from one of my private students that I work with just one-on-one -on -one over Skype. And we had a lesson together yesterday, and she was telling me about a flash she had the night before. She was sitting across the room from her television, just watching some TV, and on the cable box, it has the time, a digital clock, which normally is pretty blurry. She can't really make out the numbers or tell what time it is. But she had a flash of clarity and noticed that she could see each individual dot in between the hours and the minutes, so the little colon on the clock. And once she noticed that she could see those two individual tiny dots clearly, then the time popped out into clarity, and she could see easily what time it was. And then she went up to the television and could see the TV clearly as well. So once again, that's an example of how centralization created the clear flash. She wasn't trying to see the whole clock and the whole TV all at once with her peripheral vision and central vision. She was focusing on those tiny little dots in between the numbers, and then the numbers came clear, and then the TV became clear. And those three examples are from students that I work with either directly or through one of my online courses, which typically tends to increase the results and improvements and the speed that people achieve these experiences. But I also have a couple of examples from you, some of my YouTube followers, who have left comments underneath some of my videos. And these are people that I haven't even worked with one-on-one -on -one or through my courses. They just use my videos or use my book. So I want to read a couple of these to you. The first one um, was actually submitted from Africa. It's from Daniel Kiogora. He writes, wow, I'm very thankful. In fact, I'm in Kenya. And my problem is long-sighted or far-sightedness. And of late, nearly two years, I have been using plus one glasses, reading glasses. I started using these methods two weeks ago, and I am experiencing those short vision regainings, so those little flashes of clarity, which are helping to regain my full sight. This is my second week. So even just in two weeks, he's already experiencing these flashes of clarity. So even though it might take longer, you know, several months or sometimes several years to achieve permanent improvements or permanent clear vision, it doesn't take very long at all to start to actually experience these benefits and improvements on a temporary level at first. And then starting to figure out what makes those flashes come and appear for you and also what makes them last longer to eventually become the way you see all the time. 
And so this next comment comes from someone who has been practicing for longer and has achieved that. This comes from Wayne Ivey. He writes, I have been practicing daily better eyesight for several years. And as a result, I no longer need glasses. And I live a more happy, relaxed life as a result of recognizing stress and eliminating it. So that's a really good success story. And it probably started with these flashes of clarity that were temporary. And maybe he wasn't able to go without glasses completely at the start. He said he's been doing this for several years. But, you know, several years later of getting more and more of those flashes, eventually he reaches the point where he doesn't need the glasses anymore at all. And that's what happened for me. It started with the little flashes of clarity, but then it would get blurry again, and I would still need to wear my glasses. But the more they happened, the less they started fading, and the more that became the new way that I saw from the time I woke up until I went to sleep at night. So the last experience I want to share with you comes from someone who emailed me um, who has been using my book. So we haven't been working together one-on-one, -on -one, but he's been using my book called Give Up Your Glasses for Good which I'm actually currently in the process of editing and getting ready to release the new third edition of it in April or May of 2018 in preparation for my two North American book tours in June and October on the East Coast of the U.S., going from North Carolina to Maine, and then also in the Pacific Northwest in Oregon, Washington, and British Columbia. So I'll be sharing more information about that as that approaches. So I received this email last week from someone named Atul. He writes, Hey Nathan, I bought your book and I have been practicing the method and getting some really good results. I could sustain flashes of clarity for hours sometimes. But lately, I have been worried that it is just a placebo. So he brings up a really good point here. And this is something that I felt when I was first getting my first flashes of clarity. Sometimes it was actually hard for me to tell if it was truly happening or if I was almost kind of like making it up in my head. But the fact that he's able to sustain these flashes of clarity, not just for a few seconds or a few minutes like I started, but for a few hours at a time, that to me really disproves the possibility of it being a placebo because he's able to actually see clearly for hours at a time. And so when I responded to his email, I was really pointing out the fact that you really want to Use your own experience and what you're seeing through your two eyes as the highest level of proof that this is really working for you. And a good way to check in to see if it really is a flash of clarity is to use an eye chart to check in and see, you know, to measure your vision and say, okay, well, normally I can only get down to, you know, the second or third line at this distance, but now I'm able to see down to the fifth or sixth or seventh line, then that's a pretty objective measurement of you actually experiencing um, improvement in your vision because you, your visual acuity is actually testing better than it normally does. But in general, the more experiences of flashes of clarity and these clear flashes you have, the more confident you become in your own ability to see with your naked eye without depending on the glasses or contacts. But at first, it's understandable to be a little, if you're not totally sure about it, if you think it might be a placebo or you're not sure if it was a clear flash or what you're experiencing, um, it can be kind of confusing at first. But that's why it's important to just stick with it and to keep going and to keep experiencing because what I thought about my flashes of clarity was they're kind of like little previews of where I'm headed if I continue my practice. It's a little glimpse of what's possible, how I will be able to see without my glasses eventually all the time. So they're exciting. They're, they're quite invigorating when you experience them. And sometimes the excitement that comes along with the clear flash is actually what chases it away. I remember when I first got my first flashes, it was so beautiful and so clear and, and looked even better than what I saw through my glasses that I almost was afraid to blink. I wanted to just stare and not move my eyes or, you know, I constricted and was like taking it all in. But that's actually what made it go away because I wasn't staying relaxed. And that's really the key to not only getting these flashes, but to learn how to make them stick around and not fade away. So I want to read an excerpt from Aldous Huxley's book called The Art of Seeing to You Out Loud, which is explaining these clear flashes and what brings them, which is something called dynamic relaxation, which is a term that he coined in that book. And I'd actually like to invite you to remove your glasses or contacts 
and either close your eyes or even palm your eyes while you listen to me read this passage to you out loud to see if maybe you have your own experience with this and maybe have your own little flash of clarity or momentarily clearer vision after you listen to me read this to you. Because you can hear about flashes all day long, but it's not until you have your own experience where you look through your two eyes and actually see clearer in a distance where you normally can't see clearly to actually embody that experience and understand the truth of these clear flashes for yourself. So feel free to pause the video. If you have contacts in, go take them out and come back and listen. Or if you're just wearing glasses, you can remove them and get nice and comfortable. Close your eyes. There's no need to watch the video while you listen to me speak. Just close your eyes, think about what you're hearing, maybe visualize some things in your mind of what you're hearing. And we'll see if we can actually create a clear flash together today. So Aldous Huxley writes, The Bates Method is based upon precisely the same principles as those which underlie every successful system ever devised for the teaching of psychophysical skill. Whatever the art you may wish to learn, whether it be acrobatics or violin playing, mental prayer or golf, acting, singing, dancing, or what you will, there is one thing that every good teacher will always say. Learn to combine relaxation with activity. Learn to do what you have to do without strain. Work hard, but never under tension. To speak of combining activity with relaxation may seem paradoxical, but in fact it is not. For relaxation is of two kinds, passive and dynamic. Passive relaxation is achieved in a state of complete repose by a process of consciously letting go. As an antidote to fatigue, as a method of temporarily relieving excessive muscular tensions, together with the psychological tensions that always accompany them, passive relaxation is excellent, but it can never, in the nature of things, be enough. We cannot spend our whole lives at rest. Consequently, cannot be always passively relaxing. But, there is also something to which it is legitimate to give the name of dynamic relaxation. Dynamic relaxation is that state of the body and mind which is associated with normal and natural functioning. In the case of what I have called the fundamental or primary psychophysical skills, normal and natural functioning of the organs involved may sometimes be lost. But having been lost, it may subsequently be consciously reacquired by anyone who has learned the suitable techniques. When it has been reacquired, the strain associated with impaired functioning disappears, and the organs involved do their work in a condition of dynamic relaxation. At an early stage in the process of visual re-education, one makes a very remarkable discovery. It is this. As soon as the defective organs of vision acquire a certain degree of what I have called dynamic relaxation, flashes of almost or completely normal vision are experienced. In some cases, these flashes last only a few seconds. In others, for somewhat longer periods. Occasionally, but this is rare, the old bad habits of improper use disappear at once and permanently. And with the return to normal functioning, there is a complete normalization of the vision. In the great majority of cases, however, the flash goes as suddenly as it came. The old habits of improper use have reasserted themselves, and there will not be another flash until the eyes and their mind have been coaxed back towards that condition of dynamic relaxation, in which alone perfect seeing is possible. To long-standing sufferers from defective vision, the first flash often comes with such a shock of happy amazement that they cannot refrain from crying out or even bursting into tears. 
As the art of dynamic relaxation is more and more completely acquired, as habits of improper use are replaced by better habits, and as visual functioning improves, the flashes of better vision become more frequent and of longer duration, until at last they coalesce into a continuous state of normal seeing. To perpetuate the flash, such is the aim and purpose of the educational techniques developed by Dr. Bates and his followers. The flash of improved vision is an empirical fact which can be demonstrated by anyone who chooses to fulfill the conditions on which it depends. The fact that during a flash, one may see with extreme clarity objects that at ordinary times are blurred or quite invisible shows that temporary alleviation of mental and muscular strain results in improved functioning and the temporary disappearance of refractive error. So after listening to Aldous Huxley explain flashes of clarity and this concept of dynamic relaxation versus passive relaxation, I invite you now to open your eyes or come out of palming and continue to think about that as you open your eyes back up and look into maybe some of the blurry areas that normally look fuzzy without your glasses or contacts and notice if you can feel a difference or see a difference in your central vision. The two keys to achieving a flash of clarity are relaxation, dynamic relaxation, and central fixation. So let's talk about those for just another moment here before we finish up. Dynamic relaxation is different than passive relaxation. Passive relaxation is like when you're just laying in your bed or laying in a hammock and you're just not using any of your muscles. There's no activity happening, which is definitely good. It's a good form of relaxation if you're feeling stressed or your muscles are sore or things like that. But that's not the type of relaxation that Dr. Bates was talking about or what Aldous Huxley is talking about or what I'm talking about. In order to achieve clearer visual acuity, that depends on the other type of relaxation, dynamic relaxation which is the ability to stay relaxed while using your muscles, while using your eyes. And I love how he compares the skill of vision to other psychophysical skills, like learning an instrument, or learning how to dance, or learning a sport. If you, if you study any athlete or musician when they're performing their skill, they are in a state of dynamic relaxation. If their muscles were all tight and tense, they would not be doing very well at playing their instrument or playing their sport. No, they have to keep all of their muscles in that state of relaxation, but they're using them. They're running around, they're, they're moving their fingers to play the instruments, they're, they're in the zone or they're in the flow state. And that's the dynamic relaxation that you need to use in your eyes as well. So when you're palming your eyes or you're closing your eyes to rest them, that's more of the passive relaxation because you're not using them. You're not looking at anything. You're closing your eyes and letting all the muscles around the eyes and inside the eyes just totally relax and be nice and soft. But when your eyes are open and you need to be using them to look near and look far and everywhere in between, you don't want to be using the passive relaxation. You want to be using the dynamic relaxation. And another analogy I like to use for this is meditation. The purpose of meditation is not to just get really good at calming your mind down and relaxing your mind while you're sitting still with your legs crossed in a dark room by yourself. No, it's to be able to carry that skill with you over into your everyday life. So when somebody cuts you off on the highway or when you're in an argument with something, can you still maintain that calm, peaceful, meditative mind? Or do you lose it? So it's the same thing with your eyes. The purpose of the Bates method is not to just get really good at swinging your eyes or palming your eyes or sunning your eyes or doing these physical practices by yourself in your room. It's to be able to carry those principles and good vision habits with you into your everyday life when you're at school, when you're at work, when you're driving, anything you're using your eyes for. Can you maintain that state of calm, peaceful, dynamically relaxed eyes while you're looking and using them or do you lose it? Do you start to strain? Do you start to tense and stress your mind? Now, the other key is the central fixation, which I talked about at the beginning, but 
something amazing happens when you start to let go of trying to make your entire massive visual field all equally clear at the same time. You let go of the periphery and you just focus in on that small little area in the middle because your eyes can only look at one thing at a time and your vision works by contrast. In order for your brain to be able to focus on one part of your visual field best, it has to compromise another part of the visual field that you're not looking at. So when you're looking at an object in the middle, the objects off to the left and the right and the top and the bottom have to appear less clear than what you're looking at. Or if you're looking at something up close, your brain has to make the background fuzzy and less clear in comparison to the near. And then when you look far, your brain has to make the foreground fuzzy or less distinct compared to the background. So don't think that you need to be able to see everything all equally clearly, near, far, left, right, top, bottom, all at the same time. Just move your area of clearest focus around and centralize while staying in that state of dynamic relaxation. And if you get really good at maintaining dynamic relaxation and central fixation all day long, then you're gonna start experiencing more and more of these clear flashes. And these are also the keys to make them last longer as well. But I also like how Aldous Huxley points out in that reading that at first the flashes of clarity are, they can be either partially or completely clear. So like at the beginning I was talking about how some people get flashes but they don't notice it because they're looking in too large of an area and they're not noticing that they get a flash in a small central area. Some people don't notice they're getting flashes of clarity because it doesn't become 100% clear. So even if you're only getting a 50% flash of clarity, or a 25% flash of clarity, or a 10% flash of clarity, those are still really good signs, and you wanna be noticing them when they're happening, and congratulating yourself on them when they do happen, and starting to understand that maybe it's not just placebo, or maybe it's not just random, or maybe it's not just because you're having a better tear film, or you're getting the pinhole effect with your pupil. It, it's, there's a whole mental component of it too, um, not only is your eye starting to get into the correct shape, the lens starting to get into the correct shape, and the light is landing on the correct part of your retina, but your visual cortex is also getting better at perceiving the light that is entering your eye. So these flashes are both physical and mental in nature, and they may also be emotional as well, because like all just points out, when you get a flash of clarity, it might conjure up certain emotions. I know that when I started getting them, I was feeling these feelings of joy and excitement and motivation to really keep going. As opposed to when I saw the blur, I got sort of more of the negative emotion of kind of feeling down on myself, kind of bummed out that I wasn't seeing clearly. So don't overlook the emotional connection with your vision as well. That can really be an important way to bring the flashes of clarity because if you can find ways to recreate the feelings that the flashes gave you in the past, then by bringing those feelings and emotions up to the surface, it may actually encourage the flash to return and to come back. So if you have personally experienced a flash of clarity yourself and you haven't shared it with me, I would really love if you could leave a comment underneath this video, not only to make it easier for me to pull from these examples instead of having to search through all the comments under all my videos, but it'll also inspire other people watching these videos to get feedback that this is actually working and that there is some positive potential within these simple natural vision enhancing practices. Because I know that it worked for me, for myself, and I love sharing my experiences with it, but I know that when people can see other people's experience, it can even add to that inspiration and understanding that it's not just a random case, it, it works for so many people. So I want you to consider all of the Bates Method practices to be various ways to help you secure a feeling of that dynamic relaxation and central fixation, which will eventually lead to noticeable improvements or flashes of clarity. And if you've been doing a practice for a while and it hasn't been making you feel rested or relaxed or it hasn't created a flash of clarity for you, then maybe that's not the best practice for you. Maybe you should focus on other practices that work better for you. Because this isn't a cookie cutter approach. It might look a little bit different for each person. And if it's not working for you, that could be a sign that either you're doing the practice incorrectly or you're actually straining in some way 
And it's better to just skip over that practice than to keep on straining because that's only taking you farther away from that dynamic relaxation. So I'll look forward to seeing some of your experiences of these flashes of clarity in the future. And if you haven't been experiencing them on your own, then you may want to consider getting some additional help or guidance from me as your vision coach. Because like I said at the beginning, my private students and my students who take one of my online courses generally tend to get even better and faster results because I can really guide you through the process and help you figure out exactly what creates those flashes of clarity and to, to help you be able to maintain them and integrate them to become a new way of seeing your world all the time. So there will be links below this video with all the different ways that you can get involved in working with me as a coach. And stay tuned for the new edition of my book that's going to be coming out in a couple of months that will be an even better version of the one that I've already created that hopefully will create even more flashes of clarity and more permanent improvements for more people all around the world. And if you happen to live on the east coast of the U.S. between North Carolina and Maine, or if you live on in the Pacific Northwest, um, stay tuned for more information and maybe you can come out and participate in an in a in-person vision improvement workshop sometime soon. So thank you so much for watching today. And I wish you lots and lots more flashes of clarity and eventually permanent clarity in the future.